You're listening to Sip and Grow the Podcast, the show where we taste awesome, delicious wines while having unfiltered conversations about our passions, experiences, struggles, entrepreneurship, and life. My name is Nicole Di Pasquale, and I'm a wine enthusiast just trying to pursue her passions and dreams while taking you on the journey with me one episode at a time. My ultimate goal is to not only bring you wine knowledge and value, but also inspire you to enjoy your process and journey in pursuing your passions and dreams. Because guess what? The person you become while enduring the process is more important. So sit back, grab a glass, and let's sip and grow together. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Sip and Grow with me, your host, Nicole. Um, Today, I'm excited because this wine specifically is very special. For my 25th birthday, which was five years ago, I went to Quebec, Canada, and um, I did like, I did visit some vineyards and one of the vineyards I visited was a very small vineyard in Quebec City. It's in a neighborhood called St. Jean Baptist, I believe it's what it's called. Um, But the vineyard is called Vinoble Les Murmures. So it's run by this lovely couple um, and they do it all. Like they do the crop management, um, the production, everything from winemaking to maintaining the crops and um, they're this lovely couple that's super passionate about winemaking and their story is so cute so um, they are uh, their names are Daniel and Monique um, I have their last names here but I think let me see Daniel Hamill and Monique St. Arnold um, and their story is cool because you immediately feel their passion when you meet them. So Daniel was the one who essentially did the tour for us. And he had us tour his property. First of all, their property is gorgeous. It's like they have this little house on a hill with beautiful stones like placed everywhere to like create a path to the house. And the house is even created with stones. It's gorgeous. They have like a garden there with like lavender, uh, dahlias and a bunch of other beautiful flowers and plants. And they, of course, live, they basically made their yard into a vineyard. Um, So their vineyard is made up of like uh, 3,500 vine plants. And the cool story about them, like their background is that they're both uh, agronomists, I believe it's what it's called, agronomists. Yeah, agronomists, which basically they're masters at like crop management and crop production. I'm sorry, soil management and crop production. Um, AKA they're experts at like anything having to do with agriculture. And it's cute because they met um, as students and that's kind of how they got married. And Daniel actually his, uh, what I read was that his background, his dad owned like a dairy farm. Um, And he was supposed to take over that, but I I believe it, the farm burned down at one point and they were just kind of like okay like what do we do now um they had created their their own home in this piece of land that they bought right and they were kind of like wine they really liked the wine making process and they were like wine amateurs and would make it on their own but they never thought of like okay like let's get into this business until they at 10 years after being like wine amateurs they were like you know what let's make this a thing so before they opened it up in which they started, they officially started their vineyard in 2000. Uh, Monique was like, let me go to Burgundy. Let me go to Burgundy real quick, get a little certificate in like analogy and then like come back and we'll do this. We'll, we'll make this a thing. So that's what she did. Um, and the area that they're in, actually the climate there is exactly like Burgundy. Like, it's perfect conditions for growing the grapes that they grow, which they have six, uh, six or seven different varieties. I wrote them down because they're not like very common. There's only one that everyone knows, which is Pinot Noir. Um, but it's Saint, uh, Saint Croix is the first one. Pinot Noir, second one. Third one, uh, Frutinac, 
fourth is Muscat Osceola, fifth is Dragon, sixth is Vandal Cliché, and the seventh one is called Louis Swenson. So this specific wine is, they named it Le Chenepa, which it's made 100% of the St. Croix grape variety. Um, it's more on the meatier side of wines, so think of like, which I'm gonna try it now because honestly, I've had this bottle in my wine fridge and I found it the other day and I was like, wow, this is perfect for the podcast. Like I need to do an episode. This is the last bottle I have of it. It's a 2013 vintage and um, I bought this in 2018. So probably should be drinking it, you know? Um, but anyways, I love their story. Daniel gave us an excellent tour. Like I remember that tour from every little detail. We literally saw his entire property. He even showed us, he had like this smoker um, where he did smoked salmon and smoked pork. And he gave us pieces of that to try, which it was delicious. I remember to this day, it was so good. Um, and he, you could just tell like he was, he is like so passionate about winemaking and his property and everything that they have built together. Um, and I did look it up. It says temporarily closed on Google, uh, but I saw that they did. A, they have a 2022 vintage on their website. So I'm assuming it's probably temporarily closed because they're seasonal. So they, since they run the operation themselves, I'm sure they just like to take a vacation after harvest, which I don't know when their harvest is. Um, but I'm sure they just have like a temporary time where they're closed, but they're really hard to find on socials because they don't have like, at least I didn't find their Instagram or, um, I do believe they have a Facebook page, but regardless on Google, it said temporarily closed. So I'm thinking it's just a seasonal thing because they did have their 2022 vintage out to buy on their website. The whole website's in French. So that was a little bit difficult to navigate, but regardless, if you're ever in Quebec, Canada, and wanna do an interesting um, experience or wine tour, I definitely recommend going to them. Um, and I, like I said, like Daniel makes you feel right at home. He, you feel his passion and his place is super cute. Like I literally looked at his garden and was like, Daniel, you need to come and do my garden when I have a house. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and open this up and try it out. Um, ooh, the cork is coming out a little bit. I, I really, it's interesting because I don't remember how this wine tastes. So we're just gonna, we're gonna try it out together and see, see what's up. Um, the, so like I said, this is a hundred percent St. Croix grape, which it's like a, it's like a black red grape, American grape, that was developed in Wisconsin, actually. And it's well known to resist the cold. So that's probably why it's a good grape for where they live, just because it is cold over there. Um, oh my God. I hope this wine isn't corked. We'll see, we'll see, we're in this experience together it kind of smells a little suspicious though but it, it could just be a false alarm we'll see we'll see let's go ahead and pour some in here oh so already the color is giving me this wine is old like <laughs> it's giving we've we've been sitting in a bottle for a long time we need to drink you uh <laughs> so Oh no, I hope this is not bad because I left it too long and didn't drink it. It kind of smells like it might be bad because the, the smell is giving me is not pleasant at all. It almost smells like, oh my God like char, which is terrible. Um, I really hope this wine didn't go bad. I'm gonna be sad. I'm sorry, Daniel. Daniel, if you ever see this, I'm so sorry. I realized how, like, 
this was hidden in my fridge, like my wine fridge, because, and I realized how old it was because when I went on their website, they already rebranded and everything. Like this label is no longer their label. They still have the name kind of the same, but their uh, logo on the label is way different. It's actually, it's really cute. But anyways, let's go ahead and try it. <sighs> My God. Okay. Okay, definitely on the dry side, getting dark cherries, getting hints of like black currant for sure. Um, it's almost like I feel like I have a barbecue in my mouth right now <laughs> that is a terrible descriptor don't use that at home kids or people because kids shouldn't be drinking wine anyways I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's not my favorite. And I don't know if it's because I didn't drink it when I needed to drink it, or if it's because this wine is like this. That just means I need to get my hands on, on like a newer vintage because this is a 2013 vintage and I'm opening it in 2023 when it's about to be 2024. So did I do it right? Probably not. This is probably my fault. Um, right now, based off of this taste, I personally would give it... I feel so bad because I, I love Daniel. Daniel and his wife like built an, an amazing vineyard and I remember trying their wines and loving it. Um, I would give it a 6 out of 10, but I do feel like I left this too long to drink. So it probably went a little bit bad a little bit sour so i don't think the the true characteristics are coming out um because it's long overdue so that's on me um but that just means we're gonna have to get our hands on a 2022 le chenapa chenapa yeah um and try it out on the podcast so i guess i'm ordering some wines from canada because this one sat way too long in my wine cooler um anyways check them out honestly the tour for me in 2018 was 10 out of 10 so if you're in quebec and you want to do a cool different experience that's not like a mass production vineyard situation check them out because honestly that day was super cool um and again their hospitality 10 out of 10 um, he greeted us with some rosé. He explained to us his story uh, and he had us walk around the entire property. And we even got to try his smoked salmon and his smoked pork. Like, who doesn't love that? I love that. It was a, a foodie and wine lover's dream. Um, anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I apologize that I probably left this wine too long to taste. But cheers to Daniel and Monique. Cheers to Daniel and Monique. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>